Hello everyone, welcome to this day three exciting webinar of performance management and this is your instructor Rizwan Mania. I hope you all are good, safe and your motivation, your confidence is building each and every day. So today you all must be pumped up. Today you all should be here in the session. Uh, and yes, you have to make sure that you are part of the session. Today is performance measurement, the heart of F5. If you want to pass PM, you must make sure that you have a really good grip over this section. Section includes financial, non-financial, transfer pricing, uh, divisional performance. So make sure that you all are pumped up. Don't leave the session till the end. <clears throat> and stay calm. You will understand things slowly, not at once. So let me complete the things because the techniques I'm going to tell you will be very important for you and will change the game for you when it comes to performance measurement. Your examiner specifically looks at performance measurement section. And yes, your examiner is really concerned that you perform good in this section. OK, so before we proceed, just give me a minute. I uh, need to fix some technical issue here. Uh, just a minute here, just a minute, please. Just a minute. OK, guys, so all excited, pumped up. So yes, should we start? Say yes or no. OK, before I proceed, quick confirmation. Can people hear my voice clearly? Is the voice clear to all of you? Number one. Number two, can you see my video? And number three, <clears throat> is the screen visible to all of you? Need confirmation for all the three things. That's perfect. Now I'm telling you that today you must be till the end of the session. Don't leave the session. Don't leave the session. Let me complete the things today. Be patient, relax, give yourself time and I'm sure at the day and today, the techniques that I'll tell you, these will be game changer for you people. Honestly, mark my words, these will really be good for you people because examiner judge your performance on the basis of this section, okay? So make sure that you all are with me till the end of the session, right? I'm telling you, don't leave, right? So let's begin with this exciting, important section, performance measurement. To remain connected with me after the webinar, for those who are new to uh, today's session, it's the first session for them. They are not part of my global WhatsApp groups. So make sure that this is the number that you people This is the number, just send me a WhatsApp. The pen is not working because of that. This is the number that you need to follow and make sure that you quickly send me a WhatsApp message if you want to be part of my global groups. If you're not, those groups are very important. Don't leave the groups. 
at least before the exam because lots of support will be given to you through that okay so make sure that you are part of the groups if you are not join the group just send me a quick whatsapp message plus admin will also share the link in the chat box during the webinar you will remain with me through the chat box there is a chat box given and you have to just use the chat box okay just hold on again there is a problem in uh, some technical problem really sorry for that uh, just hold on just hold on please just hold on
Okay, guys. <clears throat> uh, quickly confirm is is my screen visible to you? I'm really sorry. Uh, this is all issues of technology sometimes, and we can't do anything about it. So just let me know. Uh, is my voice clear to you? And we have just closed the video for the time being. Uh, and can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay, you, you can see my screen. I'm talking about the screen. Is the screen visible to you? Audio connection lost. Okay, can you see my screen? English. Okay, now can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me now. And the screen is also visible, right? Okay, that's great, that's great. Now, uh, really sorry for the inconvenience because we, you know, uh, there are so many issues uh, in the part of the world right now we are uh, because holidays are here. And uh, so that's why, you know, there's some shortage of signals and everything. Anyways, uh, I know my voice may be cracking. Uh, the admin is with me. Admin, please, can you confirm is everything okay at our end? Okay, so let's start then, okay? Great. Now, as I said, that uh, the day wise plan today is performance measurement. Uh, I've already shared uh, the next two weeks plan with you people. Uh, I've already mentioned that you must attend all the webinars at any cost. Uh, and uh, you, you must attend the webinars of each day. Secondly, uh, you have to follow the uh, million dollar plan uh, that I share every day, then it's the grand revision. Uh, and uh, there will be certain chapters of the book that I'll tell you that you uh, have to read. And then it's the mock if you are ready. So that's the paid mock, okay? Now today's agenda is about financial, non-financial, transfer pricing, 
uh, very important two topics and uh, if time permits then divisional performance uh, so let's begin uh, we are already late due to some hiccups today <clears throat> so now let's begin with the session let's start with performance measurement before i start i need to show you a very good analysis uh, of <coughs> very good analysis uh, of this topic of financial and non-financials uh, so it, it definitely will be helpful for you <coughs> Okay, so uh, now what is important to see here that this is one of the section that has been tested a lot in your examination. You can't expect this topic not to come in the paper because this is the heart of F5. If this uh, topic will not be tested, this means your heart is not working well. So from the teacher, from the from the uh, examiner's perspective, this is a very very important section. Okay, so you can see the uh, the frequency how the topics are tested: financial, non-financial divisional performance transfer pricing uh, this is not yet end here then you can see again uh, from September sorry from December 15 onwards and uh, latest question uh, also came on this in March June hybrid attempt uh, so lots of questions <clears throat> I'm sure we can't do all the questions but this is a quick analysis for you here uh, so out of 30 times total it has been tested 30 times so out of 30 times 19 times financial and non-financial has been tested 19 times financial and non-financial has been tested divisional performance came six times up which is 20 percent and transfer pricing which always surprises everybody <coughs> has been tested <clears throat> for 17 times okay so this analysis quickly show you that okay there is a there is a high chance of financial and non-financial coming in your paper but you know that <clears throat> because the paper now there is not just one paper uh, there are multiple papers in the examination so you can't leave anything you have to make sure that you cover each and everything because you never know a question came for you is of financial non-financial but a question came for some for one of your friends was a transfer pricing so you don't have any option left to leave the things right <clears throat> but i hope <clears throat> this analysis definitely will uh, be very useful for you it's not the end why <clears throat> because now <clears throat> i'll show you analysis of uh, financial and non-financial only separately that these are the topics uh, are, that are tested for financial non-financial are in front of you as i mentioned that these are the topics that have been tested in the paper 19 times uh, so you can see the question names starting from december 7 till march june 21 uh, these are all the questions so for your practice purpose you definitely uh, can use this and you get to know that these are the questions that have been tested for financial and non-financials okay so so uh, what you need to do is that uh, now uh, we will be starting with this section so let's begin uh, with this section and let's start with uh, a basic thing and that is a very small concept of critical success factor i'll just start with the basic here to tell you what success are uh, remember if the organization wants to achieve its, its objectives, its goals, its, its, its strategies. strategies. So they, they need to set up critical success factors, CSFs, okay? CSFs basically are the areas in which a business should win. This is the area where business, business success is extremely important and business should win uh, in, in the area of critical success factor, okay? So, uh, what, what are CSFs? A quick idea I want to give you. Do. Remember, Remember, there, there are, are different, different type, type of businesses, businesses uh, in, in, in which uh, the business can be done. done. Like, <laughs> like, or if it's, it's a manufacturing business, business, or it's a service business. business. So, so obviously things will, will not change, change according to the type of the business. business. So, so for, for example, example, if I say uh, that, uh, that uh, there is a, there is a, a hotel, hotel, right? right? Uh, so, so for a hotel, 
what other critical substances factors. factors. So, so obviously, the CSF for a child would be different to CSF for a school, school right? right? So, so this, this is very much clear. It depends on the business to business. What are the critical success factors for that particular business? Okay. okay. So. so so, uh, so, uh, so, as, as I, I said, said that it, it, it depends, depends on the business to business how CSFs will be made. Now, now let me tell you very quickly, uh, for, for, a, for, a, for a restaurant okay, that, that is providing food, so the critical success factor for a restaurant will be uh, the quality of, of the food, food right? Uh, the, the taste, taste will be CSF. CSF. I'm, I'm sure, sure you will agree with me. If you go to a restaurant, restaurant for you, you the, the important thing, thing is taste. Okay, it's, it's the, the taste, taste that will matter for you. you. So now, so, so now, uh, if, if taste, taste is something, something that matters, matters for you, which, which means, means that, that, which means that you have to keep in your mind that, that this taste, taste will not be a critical, critical success, success factor for, for, for. Will not, not be a critical success factor for uh, for, for an education, education, okay? For education, the critical success factor will not be taste. Can you, can you imagine, uh, for an institute, CSF is good taste of uh, the institute. So that is so, you know, so, so strange thing. So for an institute, the critical success factor will be uh, high quality education, uh, or I can say good grades or successful pass rates could be a critical success factor for them. So this is very important to keep in your mind that CSFs will change according to different nature of the industry, okay? So I'm sure uh, I just gave you a good idea, a quick idea that, a quick idea that uh, CSFs will be different according to the business. Now, the second thing is, which is very important and which is the main topic for today, is CSFs. Uh, just wait, please. The second thing which is very important to understand here is the uh, CSFs and the KPIs. Now, what are KPIs? KPIs are basically just hold on, please.
Okay. Uh, yes, please. I'm again sorry for the disruption. Uh, this is something, you know, uh, really disturbing for me here as well. P please, can you confirm me? Is my voice okay? And can you see the screen and other things? Please, can you confirm me using the chat box? Uh, is my voice clear to all of you? And the screen as well. Yes, can you confirm, please? Is everything okay? Uh, Obed, can you please confirm me? Uh, they can hear my voice because I can't see the chat box and they, whatever they are typing, I can't see that right now. So, Beth, can you please confirm, is the voice okay? Obed, can you confirm, please? I cannot see the chat box. Obed? Okay. Okay, please. I hope you can hear my voice. Uh, again, there was some disruption and we are really trying our best to fix up the issues. And that's the worst part of technology, you know. Technology is really good, but when it is not working, it creates a lot of harm. Anyways, I hope uh, things are well uh, and I'm continuing uh, with the hope that you can hear my voice, okay? You can hear my voice. I hope you uh, are able to listen me. And uh, okay, that's great. Now I can see your uh, chat box as well. Now please just quickly confirm. Can you hear my voice? Yes, please. Okay, that's it. And you can see the screen as well, right? You can see the screen as well. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, but we are also, you know, facing the same issue. Anyways, let's begin. Okay, so guys, now I hope there will be no disruption. Stay connected and refocus yourself. So as I was telling that every business, every business uh, has certain critical success factors like quality, like comfort, like taste, like ambience. Now to check whether we are achieving our CSFs or not, we need to have KPIs, key performance indicators. These are basically the measures that measure whether CSF will be achieved or not, okay? So these are basically the one that, that, is, that are used to check whether uh, CSFs will be achieved, we will achieve the CSFs or not, right? So considering this, there is a good group of KPIs. Like if I say financial, financial performance indicators, so many, like you can say ROS indicates you about profitability, uh, operating profit margin gives you about the idea of the profitability in relation to sales. You have liquidity ratios like current ratios and quick ratios give you the idea about the liquidity of the organization. You have risk-related ratios like financial gearing uh, indicates you about the burden of the debt, like operational gearing indicates about the fixed cost burden. So there is a big list of financial performance indicators and I'm sure you know about all these things, okay? You know about all these things because these basically are uh, the financial indicators that you use to check the performance. 
So listen, whether we are achieving the CSFs or not, we have financial performance indicators. And there is a big list of that. But financial performance indicators are historical, are based on financial statement numbers, are subject to manipulation, give you a short term idea. So which are the ones that will indicate you whether the business future is secured or not? And those are non financial KPIs. Examples are so many like, for example, percentage of sales return, I would say, okay, uh, percentage of uh, uh, complaints made by the customer, okay, or number of repeat customers, how many came back to the business, okay, uh, number of training hours, so indicate the training given to the employees. So this is a very core area of your paper and that's non-financial. So you need to keep this in your mind that non-financials are very important for an organization. So you need to make sure that you do understand that the importance should not just be given to financials, but importance must be given to non-financials as well. And that is why we say we need to strike a balance between financial and non-financials. You people, if you want to perform good in performance measurement area, non-financial should be your strength, okay? Because, you know, if customers are happy, if there are less complaints, if there are less sales return, if there are more repeat customers, if your process is very fast, if your skills of employee, if you're developing the skills of your employees, this means all these things will improve your quality. And if your quality is good, this means your future is secured. So remember, for the success of the future, for the, for the future success of an organization, it's very important that your focus should be on non-financials. So these are NFPIs and these are FPIs. And to ensure the business is successful, you need to focus on both NFPIs and FPIs. Okay, perfect. Now, after this, let's move towards a very good guideline because today my focus will be on maximum techniques that I'll tell you. So as my focus right now is about financial and non-financial questions, as you saw in the previous analysis as well, that financial and non-financials have been tested uh, 19 times in your exam, 19 times out of 30 attempts, which means there must be some strategy that you should have to deal with this area in a very, very good way. So I'm giving you best tips here. Listen, if a CRQ question comes, which is, which is a very high chance of 20 marks on financial and non-financial, okay? So if a 20 mark question comes for financial and non-financial in a CRQ, this means that considering the exam standards, you have 1.8 minutes per mark, which means that if you have 1.8 minutes per mark, so in total, you have 36 minutes to solve the question. Please just note it down everyone and just concentrate now and make sure that you can hear me very clearly and you can see all the things in front of you, okay? I need 100% concentration now. So you have 36 minutes in which you have to complete this, right? So should I tell you some formula? Should I tell you some way out through which you can easily utilize your time? I'm sure you need that. Just tell me very quickly, how many of you badly struggle in time management for uh, in area of financial and non-financial. Can you quickly just let me know here how many of you badly struggle in this area? Okay, so I can see there are so many students answering that they struggle. So I'm telling you a universal strategy today and I'll try my best to make your weakness your strength. So be with me, stay connected and let me know at the end of the session that whether your weakness did become strength or not, okay? So I'll do that, inshallah, inshallah. 
Okay, so I'll tell you a strategy, and that is very simple. There are five do's that you have to keep in your mind for performance measurement. Financial, non-financial. Sorry, I, I'll repeat here. For financial, non-financial questions, five do's. First of all, you read the requirement and identify work. What is the work? Discuss, assess. Okay, so understand the work. Second, plan the answer according to 1.8 minutes per mark basis. How? I'll tell you a split of 36 minutes. And what is the split of 36 minutes? Okay, so the split of 36 minutes is very simple. And what's that? Let me tell you. I'll divide this 36 minutes into three parts. Number one, reading of the question. Okay. Second, calculations to be done. Okay. And the writing part, the writing part, which I am saying the discussion part. Okay. The discussion part. Okay. Now, maximum five minutes you should spend on reading the question of financial and non-financial. I'm again, again repeating. This is not for divisional performance questions and this is not for transfer pricing. Okay. Five minutes you should spend for reading the question. Got it? Done. Maximum, maximum, maximum nine minutes. Maximum nine minutes for the calculation. Maximum nine minutes for the calculation you have to spend. Okay. Five for the reading. Nine minutes maximum for the calculation. Now, if you save time either in reading or in calculation, that's a bonus for you. Right? So that makes 14 altogether. So how many minutes are you left with out of 36? So you are left with 22 minutes. 22 minutes you are left with, which means I'm giving you good 22 minutes to write and do the discussion part. So that's the break of 36 minutes. We always feel that 36 minutes are not enough in the paper. It's not that, my friends. It's not that. It's the right planning. If you know, you can handle it. So Rizwan Mania came up with a solution today. And the solution is for the global PM students that they are given with 36 minutes. And from today till the exam, Three to four questions you have to solve with this same time management at least. Will you do this? Say yes or no. So what is the strategy? The strategy is quite simple. So let's sum up the strategy. Reading, five minutes. <clears throat> Calculation, maximum nine minutes. Discussion, maximum two minutes. 22 minutes, sorry. So that's total 36 minutes for you. Now, if you save time in reading, and calculation so that adjustment will be done as the time for discussion will increase and the more time you give yourself for discussion that's good for you people got it right perfect moving on the next part is you know the time management it's very much clear now five minutes for reading nine minutes for calculation and 22 minutes for discussion and these are all maximum time Done. Now, what is the strategy uh, for solving the questions? This time is clear. Time management is clear. Okay. Now, what is the strategy to, to follow in these 36 minutes? Okay. So, the strategy of calculation and writing is very simple, which is C, C, D. C, C, D. Now, what is C, C, D? C sample in the next slide. So, let's move towards the next slide. And this is a sample. C is Calculate what ratios? Ratios. Okay. In terms of percentage, calculate ratios. The more you calculate, now what I mean to say is calculation is important in terms of ratios. Okay. So first calculate the ratios. Look at the data. You will be given either with financial data only. Or you will be given with non-financial data as well. So by looking at the data, calculate ratios. Right? Here, the most common financial ratio, which is very much applicable to PM exam, financial ratio is percentage change 
in sales revenue percentage change in cost it's the most 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 common percentage change in sales revenue percentage change in cost because normally i'm talking about financial research okay listen because normally in pm paper you just take out the exam i would say more than 90% of the times it's the profit and loss given in the paper with no balance sheet which means if there is no balance sheet gross out of question current ratio quick ratio inventory days receivable days payable days out of question financial gearing out of question so what you are left with you had you just have profit and loss statement which shows revenue cost and profits so in that case you you will just work out the operating profit margin or the gross profit margin or the net profit margin no that will not be enough so what else will you do i'm telling you percentage change in revenue percentage change in cost is what you can work out even even you can work out percentage change in individual costs like administration cost percentage change in advertisement cost percentage change in payroll cost so this is also you can do so my friends those who are listening me here today's session will give you lot of tips so please just keep a pen in front of you a paper and note down these things because this is all experience okay that i'm sharing with you people great now so what i said here you have to work out percentage change because most of the time you are given with profit and loss statement so this is for the calculation part done with the calculation then is comment comment what is a comment let me read a short statement that quickly tells reader that is the examiner you understand what the indicator means it's a lead in to your next sentence where you complete your idea remember no marks if you only give generic comments so listen listen what is a comment comment is this one this this is a comment and you get marks for this one you worked out the ratio that is 15% increase in revenue is a ratio okay that's the ratio 15% increase in revenue 10% decrease in the cost 50% is the gross profit margin this is a ratio now what is the comment what is comment the comment is what this indicates what this indicates okay if there is an increase in revenue is it a good sign for the business or a bad sign so you will say this is a good sign now this is a comment this is a bad sign this is a comment the performance of the business seems good here this is a comment okay it's a bad indicator this is a comment so you have to actually write that whatever you have worked out the ratio is that ratio giving a good sign for the business or a bad sign for the business is this thing is this change good for the business or a bad it's or it's bad for the business that is just one sentence which is known as comment because whatever you will do next basically will depend on the first statement that you say is it good or bad what has happened so this is comment done everyone so first calculate the ratio then looking at the ratio give your comment whether this is good or bad that's it third then comes the most important one and that is discuss about one thing and that is w h y why why this change resulted if it is good why it is good why it is good if it is bad why it is bad so you have to give your comment in terms of that why this change actually happened the reason for that now if the revenue has increased so tell the reason why it increased by 15% if the cost has gone up then tell why the cost has gone up if the advertisement cost has gone down tell why it has gone down 
if the number of customers have increased, tell why it has increased. So this why is not just for financial ratios. It is also important for non-financial ratios. And this is where you gain marks. You need marks. You need to score good. Reasoning is extremely important. I repeat, reasoning is extremely important. Okay? So remember that reasoning will play a very, very, very important role. So reasons why this happened. And for this reason, definitely, definitely, you can find the reasons directly from the case study, from the scenario. It's a professional paper. Examiner is not a fool. Examiner prepares the scenario and leaves certain reasons in the scenario which you people have to pick and write. That's it. So reasons are given in the scenario. Don't miss out the reasons. There are reasons obvious that you can use. So you can, you can link directly using the scenario. And if needed, indirect links could, can also be a possibility. For example, if one indicator changed, so this may result in other indicator changing. Let me give you a quick idea if you want it. For example, if number of customers increased for you, okay, so maybe because customer increased, your quality went down. Uh, for example, if you have an online internet business, or website based business if your traffic on your website increased so this means your uh, system downtime increased if the traffic on the website increased which means late delivery occurred are you getting the point so direct reason means things are obvious in the scenario clearly mentioned for example it is very clearly mentioned in the scenario that the the company uh, made an investment Oh, sorry, company has spent 2 million in advertisement. Now, very clearly mentioned that 2 million advertisement incurred. So, this is the reason for increasing the advertisement cost. That's the direct link. That's the direct reasoning. Are you listening to me? The reason is mentioned there that 2 million spent on advertisement. That's the direct reasoning. What is indirect? As I gave you example. Customers increase, which is obvious in the scenario. Now, because customers increase, this could become the reason for delay in the deliveries. Indirect link. Customer increase, deliveries went bad. Delays in the delivery came. Okay? So, direct reasons are very secured, very good ones. Mention in the scenario. Read the scenario thoroughly and find out the reasons and write it. For indirect reasons, you need to work smartly. You have the practice before uh, the examination. You should know the obvious connections. You can write. Okay. So that's direct and indirect uh, reasoning that I'm telling you here. So now, we will, once we move towards the question, we'll find what to do. So coming back to the previous slide, it's C, calculate. C, comment. And D, discuss. The highest marks are for discussion. Highest marks are for discussion. I hope this is clear. Calculation, comment, good or bad, discussion. Directly linked with the scenario or the indirect connections between the ratios. I've already mentioned this. The discussion says why something has changed and do link with the scenario. I did mention that. Direct and indirect. Use subheadings and different short paragraphs subheadings and different short paragraphs for your drafting purpose okay a very common question many students ask that should we do calculations first obviously first you need to do quick numbers based calculation because those then works for you for your comment and for your discussion okay so now these are the five do's that you have to keep in your mind i'm sure these will help you now coming towards uh, the past paper question and before I start the past paper question section C so uh, a quick tip that I want to give you people is very simple 
that uh, understand verbs and the objects complete in 36 minutes. I did told you the plan of that five minutes for reading, nine minutes maximum for calculation, 22 minutes for the discussion. Perform calculations that are carefully structured and neat, clearly set out, write accurately, coherently using simple English. Okay, so if this is so, let's begin with the today's first question. Okay. Now, please everyone, let's apply the rules that we just have covered right now. Remember the instructions that I've shared with you people up till now, what do you think? The things that I've mentioned are useful for you. What's your quick feedback? Say yes or no. Are the techniques awesome? Yes or no? Okay, let me let me quickly take a few questions. I can see certain questions above. So let me quickly answer those questions if I think questions are relevant here. Okay, so uh, Mohammed Zain says English is not my first language, so not an issue. It's not an English test in the examination. Okay, it's not an English test in the examination. So a normal, understandable English would work for you. Grammatical issues is not a problem. Okay. Okay, the next question uh, is, uh, sir, all of these questions related to fashion or fashion are application based, right? Yeah, all are application based. Uh, good or bad of the company, right? Scenario link, exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, the next question is, uh, okay, uh, sir, for calculation and word processing platform, would we show workings or use calculator? Uh, I'll just, uh, okay, that's that's simple, not an issue. You have to show uh, the calculations on Word. Uh, so what you can do is there are two years. So for one year, you can show the calculation using numbers, not the formulas. Don't write the formulas, okay? And for the other year, you can use uh, your calculator and input the final answer there, okay? Okay, great, great. Okay, uh, uh, I'll, I'll reply, I'll just let you know how many ratios to calculate. Okay, let's, let's now start. First of all, let me quickly tell you it's a 20 mark jammer question. Using information provided, discuss is the verb best night financial and non financial performance. June 2017. Five marks are available for calculation lovers, 15 marks for discussion. So remember, calculation weightage is not that much. So you don't over calculate. Avoid over calculations. Avoid over calculations. Okay. So I'll tell you how to select things and work out, right? There is no benchmark. Should I work out three ratios, four ratios? It depends on the question information, right? Okay, let's start. Best night operates a chain of 30 hotels across the country of S-Land. Now, note each and every instruction that I'm giving. When reading the question, just figure out the nature of information nature of the business, what kind of business they do. So the business that they have is a hotel business. And once you have understood the nature of the business, just think of any hotel that operates in your country. Like Sheraton, Avari, PC, okay? So just think of the hotels, Novotel, okay? So that you, can easily absorb the things you mentioned in the scenario. Put yourself into that hotel position, okay? It prides, it prides itself on the comfort of the rooms in its hotel and the quality of service. So obviously, the, they, they want good quality. The majority of the best nights company hotels are located in major cities and have previously been successful in attracting big customers. In recent years, however, 
the number of business customers has started to decline. Now that's a that's a difficult thing. That's that's a worrying thing. Okay, as a result of tough economic conditions. So now every information, obviously, which is giving you the idea that things are going bad, and the reason for that is economic downturn. You should highlight all those things. Best companies' policy is to set standard prices for the rooms in each of its hotels. With that price reflecting the hotel's location and taking account of competitor's price. However, the hotel managers have the authority to offer discounts to regular customers and to reduce prices when occupancy rates in their hotel are expected to be low. Obviously, it's a normal business thing, right? The average standard price per night across all the hotels was $140 in 20X7 and $135 in 20X6, which means that they have raised the standard prices, okay? In addition to the room bookings, the hotels also generate revenue from additional services available to customers such as the restaurants and the bars. Okay, now, you have to look at the information very carefully because you need to decide the ratios and you have five minutes to read the question okay so in those five minutes just read each and everything very thoroughly so you have revenue rooms at the standard price per night you have room discounts given here you have other revenue you have total revenue you have operating costs and you have operating profits. So not very much information to be honest. Now, by looking at the very small extract of PNL, it gives me a clear idea that what I should do. I will work out percentage change for revenue, percentage change for discounts. Now, this is how I'm selecting the ratios and this is what we normally do. Almost for every item we work out percentage change, whether that's relates to cost or revenue. Percentage change for food and drink. Okay. I hope you are understanding the way of selection. Uh, percentage change for total revenue because very much information is concentrated towards revenue here. If you just observe how many lines are given for revenue, one, two, three. And this also relates to revenue, right? So a lot of very revenue related information, which means your marks obviously will be more towards this. It's a common sense. If you have information relating to one thing, which is more, so more marks are available in, in that particular area to uh, just write your answer, okay? Operating cost, you have, but there is no breakup, okay? So you can't do anything here. And operating profit, so when it, uh, whenever you are given with any gross profit or operating profit, so percentage change for operating cost and for operating profit or gross profit, we'll work out the operating profit margin or the gross profit margin. So see, the selection of the ratio is, this is how you select the ratios in the paper. Now you pick out any questions and do the same thing, you will find the same thing in your answers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We can see on the face of the information, right? What else? Other performance information is given where you have capital employed. You have average occupancy rates given in percentages. And you have average customer satisfaction scores. Fine. Fine. Okay. Capital employed is calculated using depreciated cost of non current assets at all best night hotels. Now, it's obvious you are given with operating profit and capital employed. So one ratio is very much on cards. Can you tell me the name of that ratio? Let me quickly see how many people can give me a quick answer here. Yeah, rows is very much on the cards. Even, even asset turnover is very much on the cards okay but rose definitely rose is very much on the cards so return on capital employed is what you can work out fine 
Now you might be thinking what to work out next. So listen, examiner has said earlier in examiner reports, and it's a very important thing, that if I am giving you certain percentages myself, so don't, don't, don't just use those percentages directly, but for these percentages, also work out a percentage. <laughs> wow. For these percentages, also work out a percentage, which means represent these percentages into relative terms. Represent these percentages into relative terms, which means that you also represent these in relative terms, means you work out percentage change for these as well. And this gives you much better understanding of the data. Now, if you see here, the difference is 2%. Okay, but represent this difference in terms of further percentage. I'll tell you how. So, I'll tell you that as well. So, I'll work out one more ratio. That's fine. Okay. Uh, these are satisfaction scores. So, nothing much I can do for the satisfaction scores. It says... Customer satisfaction scores are graded on scale of 1-5. 5, five represents excellent. Uh, on average, in any given town in Esland, top 10 earns a score of 4.5 or above. And top 25 earns a score of 4.2 or above. Okay? So, you can see here, those who are top 10, they have a score of 4.5. And those who are... Top 25 have a score of 4.2. So that's nothing much I can do. It's a, it's a score given to me. Two themes are becoming increasingly frequent in the comments of best nights customer make alongside these scores. Let's see, two important feedbacks. Repeat customers have said that standard of service is in recent visits has not been as good in the previous visits. So your quality has gone down. The rooms need redecorating and the fixtures and fittings need replacing. For example, the bed needs new mattresses to improve the level of comfort they provide. This means your, your furniture is old, your bed sheets are not good. Imagine you are in a hotel and you see poor stained bed sheets. How would you feel? It, it really, you know, it really uh, disturbs me as a person, to be honest. When I go somewhere and I look at the bed sheets and I say, oh man, stains in the bed sheet, dirty bed sheets, oof, bad quality. Okay. And recently I went to somewhere a few weeks back and the same, you know, was my experience here. Anyways, Best Night had planned a two year refurbishment program beginning in 20X7 of all the rooms in each hotel. However, this program has been put on hold. Why? Due to current economic conditions in order to reduce expenditure. So they, they have put this on hold and this is what you have in terms of the information. So five minutes to read the scenario and now the game starts. Now the game begins. So please be with me everyone. I'll try to make this really, really simple for you people. So the first thing you're going to do on a word processing sheet, because no Excel will be given for this part. So you basically will do a simple thing is that you will make a table. There is a table option given there. Just make a table and in that table work out the ratios uh, because you are given with two years here. And mostly what you have to work out is percentage change, which means it will not take much time because you are just calculating the percentage change of each and everything. So let me quickly tell you here, uh, because I will definitely save my time. Uh, so I will quickly just do the workings here and will definitely go towards the answers directly then. So what exactly you have to do, let me quickly show you the working part. You have the calculators. I don't need calculator here. Now, okay, 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 okay. First of all, the straight workings. Uh, this is the recent figure, okay? This is the recent figure. And this is the previous one, okay? So how do we work out percentage change is recent minus previous divided by previous multiplied by 
100 will give you percentage change okay so this minus this divided by previous 104976 multiplied by 100 will give you the answer second this minus this divided by 11540 uh, will give you the answer this minus this divided by 23185 will give you the answer total revenue this minus this divided by 116621 will give you the answer Operating cost, this minus this, divide by 92, 379, multiply by 100 will give you the answer, okay? Don't waste your time doing calculations, just understand what I'm doing. For operating profit margin, obviously, operating profit divided by the sales of 111890 uh, will give you the answer. For the second one, operating profit divided by 104976 will give you the answer. Wow. Did I save my time? Say yes or no. I did, man. I did. Okay. That's so great. Easy, simple, to the point. I hope you all are listening to me here. Now, there is one more thing I wish to work out. And that, that's, to be honest, that, that is important. And you will see why this is important. But right now, without explaining why I'm working out, I'm just working out to show you the workings only. Okay. I want to work out a figure here based on these two things okay it's one 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 eight nine zero it's it's my revenue based on standard prices and the price for 20x7 was 140 and the price for 20x6 was 135 okay price per room per night okay now what i'm doing is i'll deduct the discount to work out a figure and this is a figure which is not available here. It's the revenue after discount. Revenue after discount. Okay, let me use my calculator here. This is the only one time I'm using calculator. No, not one time. Uh, minus 16,783. So I'm getting a revenue of 95,107. Okay. And the same I'll do for the previous year, 104976. My friends, are you with me? 11,540. Okay. So 104,976 minus 11,540. It's 93,436. Okay. First of all, what I've exactly done here. What I've done is that I worked out the revenue after discount. And this revenue pertains to your rooms only, rooms only. Okay, because this is the other revenue. So I just wanted to see, and my total revenue includes this part. Total revenue includes the part of other revenue. So I just wanted a revenue that is just relating to the rooms only with no other revenue in this. And this should be after the discount to see after discount what actually I've earned. Now, what matters? Does your strand, standard price matters or does your actual price that you have received matters? I'm sure you will agree that standard price it doesn't matter because if you offer discount, what comes into your pocket is what matters. And what comes into your pocket is the price after the discount. Wise, wise thinking, right? What matters for you is the price that you receive in your pocket. It's after the discount. I'm sure you all will agree with me on this point. Do you agree? So this revenue is what matters for me. That's the revenue that I've earned from the rooms after the discount. And for this, I'll work out percentage change as well. So this minus this divided by 93,436 percentage change so i've i've done all the workings of percentage change here percentage change in revenue percentage change in discount percentage change revenue after discount percentage change of other revenue percentage change of total revenue percentage change of operating cost and operating profit margin understood you must understood this you must understand this. Okay. Now, if I go to my presentation area.
Okay, just wait, please. Okay, just wait. I let me open the uh, let me open the answer. Just hold on. Uh, let me open the answer slides here. Uh, where is the answer slide? So let me check. Okay. Okay. Now I just I just uh, open the answer slides in a in a while. Uh, the other calculation I want to perform before I give you a short break to absorb the things as well uh, is 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 the calculation of capital implo uh, rows. Okay. Rows is quite straightforward to work out. Uh, the reason is I have been given with operating profit. So let me show you the working of rows. Uh, it's 20, uh, 3, 9. These are in thousands, right? Yeah. 23,915 operating profit divided by capital employed of 39,500. Okay. So this is the return on capital employed for 20x7. And the similar working you can do for 20x6 as well, uh, which is 24242 two, two divided by uh, 39100. Okay, so I'm just showing you the calculations part first so that once I move on to the answer slides, uh, we don't have to bother about the calculations. Okay, done. Rose done. The last thing I need to work out here before I give you the break as well, and that's the percentage change. In occupancy rate. Now, this is specifically mentioned in the examiner report. You have to keep this in your mind. So, what I'm trying to make a point here is that you have to work out percentage change in the occupancy. Now, how will you do it? It's very simple. 74 is the latest occupancy percentage divided by 72 is the previous one. Okay divide by 72 now what is the answer you are getting here 74 minus 72 divide by 72 is 2.8 percent 2.8 percent is what it's the percentage change in the occupancy it's the percentage change in the occupancy rate okay now this is a relative thing relative major examiner says you work out these things for percentages for anything that is given in percentage you work out a percentage change for that and this gives you the idea that the occupancy has increased by 2.8 percent occupancy has increased by 2.8 percent this is what is important so work out things like these for percentages. It gives you marks in the paper. Done, everyone? Okay? Happy? Okay. So let me take your questions here. Up till now, what do you think? I've made things easy for you people. Up till now, are you satisfied? Yes or no? I know it was a delayed start. I cannot do anything. But I'm trying my best to make this session really productive for you. And today, if you are with me, despite the problems, I'm sure you'll be very happy and satisfied. Okay. And I might take a few minutes more, obviously, because the delayed start. So uh, I hope you don't have any issue if I extend the class for 15, 20 minutes more. Because I want to complete transfer pricing as well. Okay, thank you very much. Let's take a break. Let's refresh ourselves. Uh, it's a five minute break. So we'll begin in five minutes time.
Okay, welcome back after the break. I hope you all are good. And now it's time to begin with the discussion of the drafting of the answer. So my friends, I've done the calculations for you people. I'm sure you are satisfied with the calculations that has been done. Say yes or no. Okay. Okay. So any done with the calculations, right? Should I start the answer directly now? Okay. You all can hear me as well. Quick confirmation, right? Okay, you can hear me, right? Hello, can you hear me? Please confirm, can you hear me? Why I can't see your comments? Okay, great. <clears throat> now, so all the calculations that I've done here, so now you can see, now you can see, uh, Okay, so in examination, you will make a table like this, okay, on your word. There is an option given in the word processing sheet to make a table. So you know that there are two years of data and uh, then obviously this one. And what you can do is, uh, now it all depends on the time you have, but if you have time, then you show one year working. Don't show 20, 2000X, 20X6 working, just show 20X7 working. And the working is like this. For example, you, you, you just mentioned the current figure minus, just mentioned the figures. Okay, I'm not telling, I'm not saying that write the formula, write the figures here. The previous figure divided by the previous figure. So, and then the answer. Now, if you're really short of time, then obviously don't have any option. Just work using calculators and just write the figures directly here in the table. But if you have time, then show some sample calculations. Don't write formula. I'm talking about the numbers, okay? Like for example, 200 minus 100 divided by 100. This is what I mean to say here. Okay, done. Now, these are the answers. All what I worked out before. So you can see, Standard revenue, 6.6% increase. Discounts increased by 45.4%. Be with me. Now, this is the room revenue net of discount. Remember, I told you the third percentage. That is, after the discount, what revenue we have earned from the rooms is this one. Change in occupancy, percentage change of the occupancy. Total revenue net of discount is this one. Okay, this is the total revenue, including the food and bars as well. Okay, additional revenue, food and bar, operating profit increase. Okay, uh, this is one additional one I didn't mention that uh, in the working area. If you don't work out this, that's fine because if you're working operating profit margin, so it doesn't matter. So, as such, if you don't work out this, that's fine and the rows and then the average score we have right so now let's come towards the interpretation and what to do listen subheadings are important and uh, in that subheading paragraphs are important so listen what i'm doing here first what i've done is this is the first subheading that i've used here gross room revenue okay so if I say gross room revenue increased by 6.6%, be with me. So calculation, comment and discuss, okay? Now calculation done, comment. Is 6.6% good or bad? So when I ask, you also reply me, okay? Is this 6.6% good or bad? 
So it's a good one. This is the comment. It's a good sign. Right? Okay. So it's a good one. Now, if you have the reason, do mention. So the revenue increased. What are the obvious reasons given in the scenario? So I will use the scenario very frequently here. I'll just highlight now using a highlighter. Listen, the obvious reason, this is the direct link I'm finding out. The reason why it increased is you increased your standard room prices. Done? Reason number one. Okay. Reason number two is the increase in occupancy. The increase in occupancy is reason number two. That is, it increased by 2.8%. Okay? So, both have contributed to the increase in revenue. Fine. So, we can mention this. This increase of 6.6%, .6 which is good one, this is a comment, is because of higher occupancy and increase in the standard room rates. Perfect. First heading, then under this heading, you write a comment and the reason for that in a paragraph form. Perfect. Now, now I'm coming towards the revenue after discount. Be with me. This is the revenue. This is the revenue after discount, but it doesn't include the revenue of food and drink. I'm talking about this revenue, this, this revenue doesn't include food and drink. Okay. Now this revenue increased by 1.8%. Just, just try to understand the gross revenue increased by 6.6%. And the net revenue after the discount that doesn't include food and drink increased by just 1.8%. Can you, can you see the difference? It's a huge difference. Your gross revenue increased by 6.6% and your revenue net of discount increased by 1.8%. Now you tell me. Which revenue is a one that is genuine for you? Come on, tell me which one. I'm looking at the uh, comment box. Which revenue is genuine one? After discount or before discount? Which revenue shows your real performance? After discount or before discount? Everyone, please participate with me. Obviously. So don't be happy to look at this 6.6% because that's useless. Because you are a, because you are giving discounts and why this happened, you know why this happened, because of massive forty five point four percent discount. Reason. Now this is a reason which is obvious, and this is what I've done indirectly linking. This is indirectly I've linked here. The direct link means mention in the scenarios paragraph. Or the information given there and even this is also mentioned if i say here this is this could be a direct link as well you can see very much obvious that they are offering discounts reducing the prices very much obvious this is a direct link as well so i can see say here first of all the comment okay it increased by 1.8% comment, comment, 1.8%. But this is very less percentage increase because your gross revenue increased by 6.6% and your net revenue is increasing by 1.8%. What is happening? So we will say this is because of 45% discount that you gave became the reason for this just 1.8 percent increase so don't be happy don't be happy by seeing this 
This is the genuine thing you have. And massive reason is 45%. Now, wow, wow. Hold on, hold on and listen. Important thing coming up. Important thing coming up. Wait, wait, Kanga, I'm answering this question. Listen to me. Now, why did we give discount? That's not our concern, okay? And it's obvious because if there is, there is a competition in the market, it's an economic downturn in the market, okay? And if they have mentioned themselves in the scenario, if there is, there is a pressure on occupancy, they give discounts, right? Okay, now listen. Now listen. When we were at the gross revenue, we said that reason one in increase in gross revenue is the occupancy, right? And reason two is the price. Listen, there were two reasons for gross revenue. But if I focus on net revenue, which means I have given discounts and that revenue is after discount. Listen, listen, listen. So the net revenue increases just by 1.8%. Now, the reason is discount, obviously. Okay. The reason is discount, but still I managed to increase the revenue, right? Still I managed to increase the revenue by 1.8%. Now, for 6.6, .6, there were two reasons, but what do you think for this 1.8% increase, is price the reason? Increase in price the reason or increase in occupancy the reason? Come on, tell me. For this 1.8% increase, is price the reason or occupancy the reason or both are the reasons? Come on, this is a test. For this 1.8%, is price the reason? Oh man, you are not understanding my point. I am saying 1.8% increase. What is the reason for this increase? Price or occupancy or both oh i'm seeing very different answers now see this is a big misconception i can see the mistake right now in the comment box listen price is not the reason you know why because occupancy Rates increased by 2.8%. Remember, we worked out that percentage. This means occupancy rate increases more than 1.8% increase in the revenue after discount. So, this is making very much clear that it is the increase in volume and occupancy which resulted in 1.8% increase in the revenue. Because the other factor, which is price, doesn't had any impact on the increase in revenue. In fact, in fact, in fact, because of the discounts, your price has gone much less compared to the previous year. Yes, we cannot work out the price. We cannot work out the average price because we don't have the, pass, uh, the, the guest or the rooms here. But it's a common sense understanding that if your revenue has increased by 1.8%, so is price the reason or occupancy? So look at the occupancy percentage. Occupancy percentage increased more than this 1.8, which means this is pushing revenue increase. But revenue isn't increased in the same proportion because there is one more factor that is not allowing it to increase in the same pace. And that's the price, which means after discount, your prices have gone down compared to the previous year. Understanding the point? Yeah, from gross revenue perspective, 
I agree two other reasons. But after looking at the net revenue, you are not charging the standard prices. You are giving so much discount. That is why, that is why what is happening. That is why your prices have gone down. Rather than an increase, they have gone down. Previously you used to charge 135. This time there is no increase in price. In fact, the price has gone down. That's why your revenue doesn't increase in the same proportion. So see, it says occupancy rates have increased by 2.8%. And this was the reason for this increase of 1.8% in revenue. This means revenue per room per night after discount was lower in 20x7 compared to 20x6 despite the standard rate being higher on 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 that rate sheet you have increased but in reality after discount your price has gone down which means you compromised on price to increase the volume you lowered down your price to increase the volume. And volume is the reason for increase in the revenue. If you need further clarity, this is the evidence. 45% discount you gave. So you compromised on price to increase the volume. So never write here in this case. Don't write that 1.8% increase in the revenue is because of increasing the price. You are wrong. Because your price has gone down because of discounts. In fact, it was the decrease in price that helped you to Im improve the occupancy. Understood? Are you all with me? Is my is my calcul explanation clear conceptually? Say yes or no. Satisfied? Happy? To the point? misconception gone wow that's a great response that's i love it great great perfect okay so this is clear which means gross revenue is not giving the real message it's the net revenue that explained that discounts was so much to to improve your occupancy levels so you compromise on prices to improve occupancy. Perfect. Yeah, but one more thing. You did lower your prices of the rooms to attract more people come to the hotel. But indirectly, this helped you to improve your additional revenues. Your additional revenues increased by how much percent? 5%. So this is also an additional income that you uh, earned because more people came to your hotel. So you somehow covered that decrease in price loss through the additional revenues. As more people came to the hotel, more additional revenue. The comment is this is good for the company. Comment. This is also a comment. This is also a comment. So it's CCD everywhere. Calculate, comment, good or bad. Tell the reason. Reason could be direct scenario based reason or indirect reason from the other indicator. So you just saw it's obvious, it's clear that now, now here, 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 I can easily do an indirect linking here. And this is the indirect link. In scenario, it was never mentioned that occupancy increase resulted in additional revenue. No, never written. You will not find no direct link. So here I'm doing an indirect link. And what's that? And that is here. That yes, it's the occupancy increase that helped to improve the revenue. This is indirect link I've done. This was direct link. Mentioned in the scenario. Understanding the difference, friends. Yes, are paying less for the room. They will generate additional revenue from food and drink. And this is good for the business.
happy so what is a direct link rezwan mania students what is a direct link information given in the scenario you refer that what is an indirect link you link and find the reason through other indicator ratio in the same question perfect perfect example now total revenue okay listen revenue of the rooms increased by 1.8 percent revenue of other uh, products like food and cafes and bars increased by five percent so overall 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 your revenue increased by 2.4 percent net of discounts overall comment overall it's good overall it's good 2.4 percent in the tough comparative environment it's good and there are two reasons for this one is 1.8 percent increase in the revenue of uh, rooms and five percent increase in the additional revenue see the level of analysis that i'm doing here and it's all scenario based no generic comments don't write generic comment examiner says don't write i don't understand why students write generic comments who is actually fitting these things in their mind open your eyes it's a professional paper how can you expect to write general comments direct link or indirect link the only two things you have to do okay if somewhere I'll, I'll i'll give you another example let's move on happy okay now the next what we have is operating profit margin from 18.9 came to 17.6 drop in operating profit margin in the scenario can you see whether it's mentioned why it went down any direct link no no direct link so what can you do very simple indirect link way i'm telling you for all kinds of margin whether it's a gross profit margin it's an operating profit margin the best the best the best way is for any sort of margin is to compare percentage change in revenue with percentage change in cost will give you the answer in every given scenario take it and be happy gift for you for any sort of margins like gp margin operating profit margin just compare to the percentage increase in revenue with percentage increase in cost so obvious okay okay so 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 uh let's see the operating cost increases by how much percent i think i haven't worked out that oh bad so let's use a calculator so it's 95 462 minus 92 379 divided by 92 379 79 okay that's great okay that's 3.33 percent okay that's 3.33 percent and actually let me tell you this is yeah this is wrong it's operating cost increase so that's fine operating cost increases by 3.33 percent okay okay now the best way to figure out the reason is what compare the cost increase with the revenue increase 
your revenue increased by 2.4% and your cost increased by 3.3%. Obviously, cost increases more than the revenue increase, your operating profit margin will go down. So obvious. Clear? Understood? So just compare 2.4 with 3.3 and in every given scenario, you can do the same thing. Every given scenario. So the operating cost increase is by 3.3% compared to revenue increase by 2.4%. That's why operating profit has gone down and the comment is this is not a good sign. First write the comment, okay? After the ratio, comment. This is not a good sign. Why? Why? Nothing is mentioned in the scenario as such. So just do an indirect linking. And what's that? The cost increased by 3.3% and the revenue increased by 2.4% resulted in decrease in the operating profit margin. And you don't have the breakup of cost here. So no details are given to you here. You don't know. So for further investigation, you need information. If sometimes you see that things are not given in detail, do write it there because listen, it's a practical stuff that you are doing. If you don't have data for the analysis, what you'll say, you'll say, I don't have information for this uh, particular area. So no breakup of operating costs is given to me. If there is a 3.3% increase, why? I don't know. But yes, indirectly you can link here is by comparing with the percentage increase in the revenue of percentage increase in cost. <coughs> For every margins, compare percentage increase in cost with percentage increase in revenue. I hope this is clear. Understanding, you can see the subheadings, the comments, and then the discussion. Okay, Rose, Mr. Rose, gone down slightly from 62 to 60.5. What is the comment, good or bad? Bad, not good, not good. Why this happened? Why this happened? Uh, you have reasons. And the first reason is that at the start of 20x7, you started with a two-year refurbish, refurbishment program. Though you put that on hold, but you started the refurbishment program, which means your capital employed have increased slightly because of that. And you can see the increase in capital employed. That's one reason why your capital uh, employed increase is the investment that you have done, but you just have put you just put that on hold. So one reason for rose decline is the increase in investment, and second, your operating profit has gone down. So there are two things to work out, rose. It's the uh, numerator which is the profit that has gone down, and it's the denominator which is the investment that has gone up. Scenario also mentioned that. Indirectly, you can even figure out that. So you can see from 62 to 60.5, this suggests, this suggests that the value of is the, the assets investment that you have done is one of the reason as you just saw here. Plus, your profits have gone down, reduced profitability. So one reason is the profitability, second is the. Clear? Now, listen, even if this was not mentioned in the question that they did an investment, for example, if nothing is mentioned. So indirectly, you can easily find out the reason. How, how, it's obvious. Remember? The formula, it's profit divided by capital employed. Look at the profit has gone down. Look at the investment has gone up. Indirectly, you can figure out the reason. 
first try to find out the direct reason mentioned mention the scenario if not then go for indirect ones okay perfect customer service scores non financial is this is non financial this is the only thing which is non financial to be honest here your score was 4.5 and now you are at 4.2 so when you were 4.5 you were among the top 10 hotels but now when you are at 2.4.2 you are among top 25 hotels which means your performance in terms of quality and customer satisfaction has gone down and you just saw the direct reasons that people are saying that your standard service has gone down this is the direct linking why score went down direct linking standard service has gone down and your fixtures and fittings are old old which needs replacement so sir why why satisfaction score has gone down first the comment part comment is not good you are not now in top 10 you are in top 25 why this happened is because there's a clear link is the customer satisfaction levels going down because of bad service reason is obvious in the scenario directly you can link from the scenario and this can affect your future business that's why i say non-financials give you future message non-financial gives you future message which means in future you will struggle in terms of occupancy and rates and prices and as it says you have you 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 put your refurbishment on hold which was needed to be done if you will not do you will suffer in the future because you have deferred your refurbishment program which can impact your future performance so for non financials i found a direct reason in the scenario and that i did highlight that discussion requires linking from the scenario linking with the scenario if there are direct links use it if there are no direct links then think smartly and create a genuine connection with some other indicator or indirectly link with uh, the things that are available in the financial areas or the non-financial areas and that requires practice practice and practice this is how i teach in my regular online batches when you solve three four questions like this you get to know okay how this is how you need to do it okay done dusted so the presentation subheadings short paragraphs based on the ratio that you have worked out not all ratios will be written using a subheading if you think under one heading you can explain two ratios together having a connection use a common subheading for that the best example of this was revenue after the discount and in this i did cover the discount as well see not needed for all of the things for operating profit you can see i in this operating profit margin heading i did cover the cost of increase of operating profit as well so that's practice that teaches you how to do it so for each ratio it is not required to use a subheading and a separate explanation things which you can link together use a common subheading and explain them but presentation should be in such a way that in a table form you show the calculations sample calculations are important so that examiner gets to know what is the idea behind your workings if you're calculating so many percentage change so if you calculate few percentage in that's fine he will know that okay you know how to work out the percentages that's fine for that for the rest you can just input the final answers no need to write the formulas and after that 
then sub use the subheadings based on the ratios and when you use a subheading so write a subheading like gross room revenue here and then in a paragraph form first the comment and followed by the reason comment followed by the reason comment followed by the reason comment will also be part of the paragraph not like the one i have shown here this is just for the ease of understanding this comment will also be part of the paragraph here the first the comment then in the same paragraph you continue with the reason why this happened direct reason link from the scenario you don't find indirect reason link with other ratios and write the possible reason no general comments the biggest issue examiner told here was people were just explaining the percentages again what they worked out they were just saying okay 45 percent increase the revenue this is not an explanation explanation means why increase why decrease the biggest issue people do in the paper is that whatever working they do they just write it okay 45 percent increase in the revenue happened for the company wow that's it go home no tell the reason why this increase so common problems that you don't have to do don't over don't do over calculations of ratios because the more calculation the more you have to explain secondly don't just explain the percentages that you have worked out tell the reasons why this change happened common mis mistakes and time management i hope my session of non financial and financial would have helped you how to construct your answer and my small effort in this area will definitely work out well for you people now give me your quick feedbacks whether this session changed your mindset or not tell me yes or no i don't know from where you took the classes but the way i am covering things i know it's my experience of 14 years that i'm telling you how to handle this my advice is for all the global students from wherever you are taking the classes from whoever you are taking the classes my guideline is what examiner wants you to do happy come on tell me happy Did I made this easy? It's is it worth it to take the session? Great, great to see your good response. Great. Spread the word. Ask your friends to watch this video so that whoever is struggling in performance measurement, that should be the last day of your struggle. Okay, that's great. Aisha, I'll show you the list of questions later on at the end of the session. Do remind me again. I just saw one question uh, above from one of the student about the operating cost percentage increase. I said, uh, why the cost increase? We can't say because we don't have the breakup of the cost. But the only thing I explained that your operating profit margin went down. So the possible indirect link is your cost went up by 3.3% and your revenue increased by just 2.4%. NFPIs are non-financial performance indicators like customer service score was the NFPI. So I did mention here there was a drop in the score uh, and the reason was uh, your quality of the service is going down. Your fixture and fittings are old. Uh, that is why your satisfaction score has gone down. it's enough totally enough you have to keep in mind the data available and based on that work out the ratios and do the commenting yeah recent previous divided previous yeah it's the most usable one zainab i mentioned that five minutes maximum you should spend in reading the scenario what else should i do now just make it easy 
AC increase the temperature. Okay, happy? I think now we should cut off this topic and move on towards transfer pricing. So transfer pricing is one of the challenging areas for my students. Uh, obviously, due to the delayed start of 30 minutes, I wish to take more 30 minutes provided if you are with me. If you are with me, I'll be motivated. I'm ready to take 30 minutes extra in your love provided you want me to take. Do you want me to take 30 minutes extra to compensate the loss initially? Obviously, you should be, you know, because if I'm ready, so you should be ready. Okay, I can't take three more hours. That's great. Okay. Perfect. So let's move on. Now, I really thought about transfer pricing. I was really thinking, and I, I see a lot of comments every time coming about transfer pricing. In um, a lot of students, you know, ask the online students and all that we can't deal with this. And so I, 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 I look at the past paper uh, and uh, look at the number of questions and the way the examiner is testing. So I came up with an idea and I categorized the questions that examiner is has tested into three categories. And I think that these three categories are the one that have been tested so far. So if you understand these, you can handle all the question of transfer price. As a concept, what is a transfer price? It's simple, you know the concept. When same company has two different divisions and they are doing business with each other, buying and selling the components from each other. So the price at which they buy and sell. Now for transfer pricing, be patient. Don't ask comments. Don't ask questions in between. Wait, let me complete it because I might repeat again and again to just fix things in your mind. Once I'm done, then you can ask questions, okay? Don't think that you can't understand. Let's leave and, and go away. If you'll go, I'll go as well. I'll, I'll not give extra, extra time, okay? So listen till the end, I finish. Okay. So as I said, same company, two divisions when they buy and sell components like semi-finished products. So the price at which they are buying and selling the price at which they are buying and selling is known as transfer price. That's it. It's a, it's a, you call this as a selling price when you sell in the external market and transfer price when you sell internally. So it represents revenue for the supplying division and cost for the receiving division. Revenue for the supplying division, cost for the receiving division. Okay. Now there are different ways to set this price. The most common, the most tested one is this general rule through which you set up a transfer price. And this rule is marginal cost plus opportunity cost. Okay, now listen very carefully. This is the most tested one. If I'm a seller, and you are a buyer, okay? You are a buyer and I'm a seller. So, you are the internal buying division, okay? Internal buying division. Now listen, I can sell the product to the external market, to the external customer, or I can sell this product to you as well, internally as well, right? So when I will sell you internally, which means I want to charge 
the same price which I can get from the external market. Right? Yes or no? Yes. And that's the concept of general rule, which says that if it cost me eight dollars marginal cost that I'll charge from you. Agreed? If I'm selling you internally and compromising my external market for you, so what price should I charge? So general rule says that, listen carefully, general rule says that I'll charge marginal cost for sure. And I will also add the opportunity cost into this. What is that? Opportunity cost is loss of contribution that I will incur if I will not sell in the external market. Loss of contribution. Listen very carefully. So I'll charge that loss from the internal division, obviously. Now, for example, I could have sold this for 15 in the market. This is the this is the external market price. This is the external market price. I could have saw I could have uh, sold this for 15 in the market, and it cost me eight dollars in terms of my marginal cost or variable cost. So what I earn is rupees or dollar seven. So each unit that I sell in the market, I earn seven. Listen, each unit I sell in the market, I can earn seven. Now, if I'm not selling a product externally, so how much loss per unit I'm doing is of seven because I'm selling you internally. So for each unit, I'm losing seven dollars contribution why should i so i'll charge you so i will charge you i'll charge this seven loss on you so i said okay you have to bear this that's my opportunity cost listen listen very carefully so this means the total eight the marginal cost and seven is the loss that i have that i'll incur if i'm not selling externally the total makes up to 15 and that's equal to the external selling price. Right? It's 15, right? Which means you hold your hair like this or you hold your hair like this or you hold your hair like this. General rule brings you back to the external price. Brings you back to the external price getting the point which means it brings you back to the market price this rule is a theoretical rule and brings you back to the market price agreed so if i say like this now would it work for you that the price that i can charge from the external customer the same i'll charge you for internal selling if you want to buy then buy it otherwise i'll sell it somewhere else so if I can sell this for 15 in the market, I'll charge 15 from you. Wow. So the transfer price will be equal to the market price, external market price. Now, did you like my example and understood what I said here? First confirm me about this, then I'll move on. Understood what I said? So general rule indirectly brings you at external selling price. Okay? Happy? Done? Okay. Great. I have linked general rule with the market price here. Now, so remember what? What to remember? That general rule brings you back to the external market price. Agreed? Perfect. Okay. Now, I know what is the market price now. So, what is adjusted market price? 
okay a small adjustment to the market price gives you adjusted market price for example for example if i sell you for 15 because i can get the same price from the market that's fine but for example for example because i sell externally i need to i need to uh, incur the packaging cost or the distribution cost but if i sell internally i will avoid this packaging and distribution cost which means if i sell externally i will incur this packaging and distribution cost and if i sell this internally i will not incur this packaging and distribution cost so one favor i can give you is i can deduct this saving of packaging and distribution cost let's say of one dollar because this is a genuine saving i am having by not selling externally this means this is known as adjusted market price or i can even say this as well external selling price listen 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 minus internal saving this is also fine this is also fine so so you can even call this as adjusted market price or you call this external selling price minus internal saving it means the same so what it means if i am selling you internally please just remove the chair Okay, now listen. So if I can sell you a product for 15, right, in the external market, and if I sell you for that same 15, okay, that's fine. But if I sell you internally, if I am getting a saving, a genuine saving of $1, because I don't want to pack it and distribute it, so I can give the benefit of that saving to you. So if I deduct that internal saving, so again, I'm at the market price, but that is called as adjusted market price. Is it okay? Is it okay? So is, this means that from general rule perspective, from general rule perspective, you are selling at an external market price, but if there is any genuine saving, you remove it, that's not a harm for you. You are not losing anything. It's a genuine saving. That's why you are just deducting that. So, which means you can sell for 14 as well. Agreed? Agreed? Say yes or no. Is adjusted market price or I would say external selling price minus the internal saving clear to you? Okay. Let me repeat it again because few are saying to repeat. Very quickly, I'll do it. Listen very carefully and once understood, do confirm me as well. What I said was that general rule is bringing you back to the market price. Say yes or no. Yes. So it, it brings you back to the market price. That's fine. It brings you back to the market because you are charging the loss. Okay. Now, if I say one more thing, that internal division, I'll sell you at the market price because this is the same I'm getting from the outside. And this is what the general rule also says. As you just saw here. But selling you internally saves me $1 because I don't have to pack that or I have to distribute that. So I can 
give you the advantage of that only the internal saving that i'm having by not selling externally that's the one dollar saving which means that which means that if i remove that one dollar saving so my market price will be called as adjusted market price which is very much similar to the market price and this is just because of the internal saving that i'm having that is why i can reduce one the price by one dollar that's it because i'm not incurring that cost so in short in short in short listen to me in short it means what external selling price minus internal saving is what general rule is saying yes or no agreed clear is the same thing if you if you remove this one from the cost then again you come to the same point it's the same thing okay listen if you remove this one from here let me tell you if you remove this in saving eight minus one okay so again you are at seven see again you are at seven seven plus seven is what 14 so you, you are at the same point see it's the same thing it's the same thing agreed clear everyone so in short it's it's simple that any genuine saving you remove it and that's the adjusted market price and that's what general rule says yeah russell you are right okay now give me a confirmation so that i can proceed up till now is this clear after this i'll do a magic up till now is this clear tell me yes or no clear perfect that's great clear perfect now so <clears throat> general rule is basically a market price or i would say or an adjusted market price if there is any saving general rule brings you back to the market price or it brings you back to the adjusted market price if there is a saving agreed covered all these things just leave this right now just leave this right now cost based transfer price okay so i've covered the main types that general rule brings you back to the market price or the adjusted market price if there is a saving now 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 the magical types i figured out let me show you one thing this is my analysis that i do transfer pricing out of 30 times have been tested five times hammer company bathco rotac mob p company manco and portable garage six times if you see these six times so these are these six times if they have been tested into three types type one two three and you if you understand these you can solve question of transfer price okay so what i mean to say by all this stuff first of all first of all first of all when you are solving a question look for the current policy sometimes what happened examiner says this is the current policy now what when i say current policy so the current policy is for two things the units that are transferred between the division and the price at which they are transferred so the questions do mention the word current policies okay uh you want to look at the current policies now what i'll do i'll do a very different thing this time let me see whether this works or not let's try a new thing 
and I love trying new, new and new things. Now, just close this best night company. Bye bye. Apple, bye bye. Three past paper questions of transfer price. I've kept three open and will show you the similarity in three. Which means I'm covering three questions together. I might solve completely one, but I'll show you three questions together. Experience teaches a lot of things, you know, to be honest. 14 years, transfer pricing, examiner mindset, teaches you a lot of things. And that is experience that you learn with time. Now, see, current transfer pricing system, current policy. Now, when it says current transfer pricing system, so there are two things hidden. The units that they are currently transferring within the divisions and the price at which they are transferring it. Okay. I'm not reading, I'm just telling you the, the things here. So you can see, B is selling to A at a price of 75. Okay, so this is revenue for the seller and this is fittings from B, cost for the buyer. So this is you, this is how you find out that what is the current policy about the units and the price. So that 75 is the current transfer price. Understood? Okay. Then for to, to find out the units that they are transferring, I need to read the scenario. So I'm not doing that. I'm just giving you the idea. Okay, done. Now second, portable garage company. Same question, almost same question. It says, using the current transfer pricing system, which means there is a current system given here, and see, selling price, sorry, I wrong. Selling price to B, 13. So it's a revenue for A, and it's a cost for B. See? The current policy gives you the idea that the, the current transfer is at 13. And once I read the scenario, I can find the units as well that they are currently falling. So what my point was here is there is current policy given in the question. Perfect. Which you read and you find two things the unit that they are transferring and the price at which they are doing. If required by the question to use this, so work using this. So I showed you Bath Company Part A required you to use the current pricing system to prepare a profit statement, so you have to use this. Portable Garage asked you to use the current transfer pricing system to prepare a profit statement, so use this. Two similar questions of transfer pricing. Can you imagine this is 2011 question and this is a 2018 question. After 2011, repeated in 2018. Okay. Getting my point. See the analysis. Wow, great. Okay. Now, so the question will ask you to use the current policy. So figure out that. And when I say current policy for what? So I mean the units that they are currently transferring and the price. And if the question is about that, use the current policy and work out the things. Okay. Now you have to be with me here, okay? Now I'm starting a question, portable garage here. So be very much with me here. 
Now, which question you want me to solve? Come on, tell me. Which one you want me to solve? Bath, Portable, or Moby Company? It's, it's your choice. Where is the chat box, man? Yeah. Which one? Tell me. Which one? It's your choice. It's the public choice. Rezwan Mania is with public. Let's see more votes for which one. Okay. Portable Garage wins the race. I'm ready for any question. That's the confidence and that's the coverage. Okay. It's the public choice. So public selected here. Portable Garage. Done. Done. So many votes for Portable Garage. Wow. Happy? Okay. It's the public choice. Let's read. Portable Garage is a company specializing in manufacture and sale of a range of products for the motorist. It is split into two divisions. Now, what I need to find out? I have found out the transfer price. I need units of the current policy. It is split into two divisions, the battery division and the adopt, adapter division. Just highlight these to find who is the seller, who is the buyer. Division B sells one product, portable battery chargers for motorists, which can be attached to a car's own battery and used to start up the engine when the car's own battery fails. Division A sells adapters, which are used by customers to charge mobile devices and laptops by attaching them to the car internal power source. Division B has upgraded its portable battery so it can also be used to rapidly charge mobile devices and laptops. The mobile device or laptops must be attached to the battery using a special adapter which is supplied to the customer with the battery. So use this information. What I want to find is who is the seller and the buyer. Division B currently buys the adapter from Division A, which also sells them externally to other companies, which means that the current policy has made it very much clear. And let me read this again here. Currently, head office purchasing policy only allows B to purchase adapters from A. Here is the current policy. My friends, I'll make this a piece of a cake for you, inshallah. Here is the current policy. The world will remember that transfer price is not difficult. Here is the current policy. And A, okay, so the current policy is what? I'll not read more than that. That B has to buy everything from A. Okay, now let's look at the information. I need to find out the units of transfer. B is seller or a buyer? Tell me. B is buyer. Who is the seller? A is the seller. A is the seller. Right? I want all of your friends to watch this today's day three video. Wherever you live in the world, I don't know. Ask all your friends after the session, WhatsApp them. Watch day three of this webinar and that will be a game changer. Will you do this for me? Say yes or no. I want to help people maximum. Great. Everybody should do this. At least this section should be the best for all of you. Thank you. Now let's move on. Okay, so the, the division B maximum demand is 180, but right now division B is only selling 150. Okay, understood? It's the selling price of B. This is the transfer price. This is the other material cost, labor and fixed cost. 
done. Now the seller A. A sells to division B. This is the transfer price. But A also sells in the external market for 15. Now here I will determine how many A selling internally and how many externally. So it's clear from the units here that 150 units, 150 units B is buying internally because it's the head of his policy to buy only from A. Which means that if I look at the current production capacity, which is of 350,000, in this 350, 150 is what they sell internally. And the maximum annual demand is 200,000, which means right now A is completely 100% fulfilling the external demand of 200,000. Because if you look at the units, A is selling 150 internally and 200 externally. And right now A is fulfilling the incomplete maximum demand and that makes 350. Understood? This is you have to do in the scenario. Same you're going to do in Bath Company to find out the units. Same thing. Okay? By looking at the maximum and you'll find out the internal transfers. Okay. Done. Now, up till now, all clear? So what we found out, is it clear what we found out? We found out that 150,000 at a price of 13. And this is the current policy. Okay. Say yes or no. Perfect. Perfect. Which means A is running at full capacity. Full capacity. Perfect. Let's start part A now. I haven't read all these things. I'll read it later on. Prepare a profit statement showing the profit for each each of the divisions and the group as a whole. Your sales and profit figures should be split into external sales and interdivisional sales where appropriate. So to show the sales separately. Now I'll use the yeah I'll use the spreadsheet here to solve this answer so that you get to know how to solve using a spreadsheet. Making things easier for you people is my passion. Okay, let's start. Part A. Now, seller, who is the seller and who is the buyer? So let's prepare for seller and then the buyer and then group. So seller is division A and buyer is division B and then group. The current policy is clear to all of you. So revenue. The question said show separately where possible. So internal revenue, external revenue, and total. Let's first start with division A, one by one. Okay, be with me everybody. This will not take much time. A, A you sell this 15, you sell externally for 15 and internally for 13. And units I know now. 150 internal, 200 external. Agreed? Okay. External. 200,000 multiplied by 15. Right? Internal. 150,000 multiplied by 13. Total. Let's use the sum formula. 4 
950000 agreed simple now the cost okay uh internal purchases so division a has no internal purchases right material labor okay material labor fixed cost 3 4 and units that i'll use will be 350000 i'm sure you will agree right because it's a variable cost so i need to charge on all the units that i produce and sell okay so is equals to use a negative sign deliberately 3 multiplied by 350000 okay is equals to 4 multiplied by 350000 please you also do working with me what's the fixed cost man the fixed cost is 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 2.2 million minus perfect what is the profit i think there is one more thing i'm missing here yeah i didn't read this yeah in addition to the materials and labor cost above division a incurs a variable cost of 1 per adapter for all adapters sells externally see this is a genuine external cost the saving i was talking about now if he sells externally he incurs one more additional dollar cost but if he sells internally he doesn't incur maybe because of no packaging and distribution done internally that's the internal saving did you saw this internal saving of 1 dollar so i have to charge this as well extra cost and this only will be and this is will this only will be applicable for the external units do you agree with me minus 1 into 200000 everybody are you with me say yes or no Okay, let's work out the answer using a sum formula. Revenue minus cost. So, is this what you are getting? Please confirm. And if you want to ask anything, I'm here to answer. Come on, I'm here to answer. If you want to ask anything, you have minute or so. Please. ask if you have any questions yes clear done perfect now second the next one and what's the next one the profit for the other division okay b b only sells in the external market and how much uh for 180 and sells only 150 doesn't fulfill the entire demand okay right so 180 into 150 clear then next any internal sales no you don't make any internal sales so the revenue is same okay do you do you buy internally b yes you do and that's the transfer price so it's easy to relate see the way i'm relating here the revenue of the seller 
is the cost of the buyer. But make sure you need to write this in negative terms, okay? So just input a minus sign here, minus sign. Okay. See the reference? Clear? Clear. Okay. Now, anything you buy from outside other materials? Yeah, other material and labor as well. 45 and 35. So let's work out. Is equals to minus 45 into 150,000? Is equals to minus 35 into 150,000. Righto? Righto. Any fixed cost you have? Yes, you have. 5460. Minus 5460. Any extra cost you bear? No. So what's your profit? It's 7590. First part, I'm solving in front of you. You have any question, please tell me. Shariar Ali, I cannot understand your question. Uh, the only thing I understood here uh, is don't apply the rule because the current system is given in this question. So follow the current system. Right now they are transferring at 13. So you don't amend that because you have to follow the current policy. Okay, Shariar. Formula, yeah, formula does matter without Kasim. Okay, could you repeat external revenue? Okay, I'll do that. Okay, see, <clears throat> 180 is the price for B and the units it is selling in the market is 150. So 180 into 150 is the revenue for division B. Division B doesn't sell anything internally, so nothing for B. These two I'll highlight is basically transfer price. This is the external cost. The rest is all same. So I think no issue. Got it. Thank you. Great. The group. Remember for group. Only everything will come in group except for transfer price. Because at group level, interdivisional business is cancelled out. You know, at the time of consolidation, we cancel out the interdivisional sales. So everything will come except for transfer price. So let's sum the external revenues. Yes. Nothing will come here. So revenue done. Internal purchase, no. See, these will be cancelled out. Will not take internal sales, will not take internal purchase. Because at group, it's like a group is looking at the whole business. So for group, internal divisional business is no business. Okay, the rest, yeah, you will take these two, some. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. All other costs will come. Just the transfer price will not come. That's it. Let's work out the group profit. It's 7690 and done with this part. And this part was for how many marks? So the marks were 9. Wow. Nine easy marks. This is my type one. This is Rizwan Mania's type one. Where current policy is given, look at the policy and use the policy to find out the answer. No application of general rule, nothing. Given is the current policy, use it. That's it. Now, you want to ask anything?
how group revenue came 30 so simple see how group revenue came 30 it's so simple man just add these two together the external revenue of a and the external revenue of b ignore the internal revenue then ganga you have done something wrong if you have lost due to signal so i cannot do right you have to watch the recording is this clear group revenue is clear man what if leave it what if right now just focus on the thing that i'm doing right now okay interdivisional will be cancelled out means neither i'll take the internal sales neither i'll take the internal purchase in group in group okay clear no questions give me the permission so that i may i may move now coming towards the main part now should i move everybody will remain here okay i know it's 10 o'clock but we are extending for more 30 minutes because of the delay in the start okay happy right let's move on then Omar, right now I cannot just focus on the techniques, please. If you focus on the techniques, you will be able to do it by yourself. Please focus on the techniques that I'm teaching here. My teaching is all technique based. Okay, done. Now let's come towards the next part. Let's see what it says. It says, but division A has refused to sell division B any more of any more than the current level of adapters it supplies to it. Oh, wow. Division A has refused to sell Division B any more than the current level. First of all, does B requires more? Yes. Because B is not fulfilling the entire demand. Not fulfilling entire demand. So B may ask A, I need more 30,000. Because the demand is 180. And you are giving me 150, so I need more 30,000. By 30,000, I cannot fulfill my entire demand. But A said, sorry, sorry, I cannot supply you more. Okay. The manager of B is unhappy. That's inevitable. He has a special industry contact who he could buy the adapters from at exactly the same price charged by A if he were given the autonomy to purchase from the outside group. If you are allowed to buy from outside, he says, I can buy at the same price of 13. Don't ask me later on how 13. See, same price, same price. After discussion with both divisional managers, and to ensure managers are not demotivated, head office has now agreed to change, 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 change the purchasing policy to allow B to buy externally, provided it optimizes the group profits as a whole. Now the interesting part starts. When the question says that group policy is to increase the group profits when the group policy is to optimize the group profits this is the biggest indication that you have to use general rule then you have to use general rule whatever question you pick up i challenge you this is the same thing so when the question says the policy is to optimize the group profits the group profits and there is no clarity how it's going to be done. There is nothing written how, how you have to maximize the group profits. Is there anything mentioned here? No, nothing mentioned. Just they have used the word optimization of group profits. 
and there is no method to do it. So you have to use what? General rule. General rule. So now, if you have to use general rule, come to Rizwan Mania's magical things. Look for the proposed policy. If the proposed policy is to maximize group profits, then use general rule. So if there is a general rule, now what I have done, listen what I have done. I, what I have done here, you know, for this general rule, I have devised a really easy to remember system for you. You just keep these in your mind and any question you pick up and you will solve it, inshallah. So what I have done, the general rule that I explained you earlier today, what I have done, I have made certain rules, keeping in mind general rule. Keeping in mind general rule, I have made certain rules. Just follow those. That's it. Okay. Now, what to do first? In a question, if you are following general rule and how you know it, because uh, it said group profit ought to be maximized. So first of all, look at, first of all, look at the external demand of the seller. Okay, so seller external demand is how much? If, if you can, uh, just listen, just hold on, okay? Be with me. Don't conclude on anything. I'm teaching you a very good principle and you can solve any question after that. Not just this one, any question. So 200,000 is the external demand. 350,000 is the total one, okay? Total capacity. So if you are using general rule, find the external demand. So that's 200,000, okay? And find the spare capacity. So Total capacity is 350,000. External demand is 200,000. So spare capacity is 150,000. Understood? Using a general rule, look at these things first. In the question, from the question you can figure out that total capacity is 350. External demand is 200,000. What is left is spare capacity. What is left, we call that as a spare capacity. After deducting external demand, what is left, we say spare capacity. Okay? For buyer, you also look at how much buyer wants. How much is the buyer's internal demand? So looking at the question, looking at the question, buyer wants 180. That's a separate thing he's not getting, but he wants 180. So the buyer's internal demand is 180, which he can even buy from outside, which is available from outside as well. Understood? So if you are using a general rule, look at these two things. Keep this in your mind. And once you have done that, then just follow my rules. Just follow my rules. You have seen a lot of questions asking you to determine minimum transfer price and maximum transfer prices. So through this general rule, we will not just be able to find out the transfer prices, but we'll find out again. We'll find out the units to transfer and the transfer price both. We'll find out two things. As it was mentioned in the current policy, right? So through general rule, we'll find out the best optimum units to transfer and the price of that as well. Now listen, let's play a game. Let's play a game. I'll make this, first I'll just teach you how to use this, my new game. It's a game I'm playing. This is a new model I've devised by myself. If you, if you input things into this model, any question you can solve. Ready for the game? Say yes or no. Ready for the game? Say yes or no. Come on. Are you ready for the game? Okay. Now let's play the game. General rule game by Rizwan Mania. 
first of all from seller perspective seller will seller will give you the idea of minimum that seller can charge minimum that seller can charge okay now the internal demand is 180 right how to fulfill the internal demand so seller will first do what seller will say i have 150000 spare units okay so what i can do i can fulfill this internal demand of 180 which i am not doing right now don't look at the current policy forget it okay which i am not doing right now i can fulfill this 180 internal demand through my spare units of 150 so if you have found out the spare units of the seller remember the minimum transfer price will be marginal cost remember this only right now whatever rules i have made are based on general rules so just just keep this in your mind that's enough for you now just keep this in your mind these this is enough for you now okay so the spare units the minimum transfer price of seller will be marginal cost so let's go to the question seller marginal cost is how much three material four labor that's seven that's seven okay agreed that's seven and remember this seven doesn't include this one as well okay so don't get confused that why you are not taking this because this is not part of this as it said in addition to the material labor cost above so this seven doesn't include the additional cost that you incur when you sell outside right so this is seven so seven is the minimum for the spare units because it's spare because it's spare so it's, there is no harm in selling at marginal cost but remember being a profit center seller would never want to sell at minimum would want more than that but if someone says you tell me the minimum one so if minimum is for spare capacity then it's minimum's marginal cost seven okay come on i'll ask one by one and we'll move on is this clear just reply me quickly and we'll move on okay this will give me the confidence the first one is clear great now units which are not spare units which are not spare how many uh we need to fulfill 180000 demand right and we have spare capacity of 150 right so we need further how many 30 30 so what you can do obviously you don't have any option these 30 you need to transfer them from your external market of 200000 okay so you will transfer then 30000 are non spare so no spare capacity is for the 30000 that you need to fulfill which you don't have any other option and you have to transfer from the external market agreed agreed okay got it so these 30,000 are a one which are not in spare capacity and how I came up with 30, I want to give the clarity of that. Because internal demand was a 180, so I can fulfill 150 through spare capacity and 30 I need to fulfill and I have only one option is to transfer from the external market. Right? So, for the units that I'm transferring from the external market is an opportunity that I'm foregoing. And you know 
that the transfer price will be external selling price less internal saving this is a rule now for you remember the rule for units that are not spare the rule is external selling price less internal saving so external selling price is how much okay it's it's how much it's 15 right 15 and is there any internal saving yes because if you sell externally you get one dollar saving sorry if you sell internally you get one dollar saving so external selling price less internal saving are you understanding my point be patient and listen let me complete it this means that 15 minus 1 is 14 so seller will not sell you below 14 for the units that the seller is transferring from the external market this is how we find out minimum in every examination scenario just find out the spare units for spare the minimum is marginal cost of the seller for non spare units the minimum is the external selling price minus the internal sale every question this is applicable i can guarantee you that now just remember this rule forget everything just remember one thing this rule is based on general rule now you don't need to keep in mind general rule what is general rule just keep this in your mind it's a summary of general rule marginal cost is variable cost farwa ali marginal cost is a variable cost salar as i said this includes the loss of contribution my friend this includes the loss of contribution 14 includes the loss of contribution so what i'm saying here is i made a rule for you this includes the loss itself so i've made a rule for you and the rule is very simple now the rule is just remember external selling price quickly pick out from the question and less internal saving will give you the same amount this includes that i did prove to you earlier right okay, that general rule brings you back at external market price do you remember this statement what i gave general rule brings you back at external selling price do you remember say yes or no you are not recalling what i said earlier farwa listen general rule brings you back to the external selling price yes or no yes so if it brings you back so this is the external selling price minus internal saving okay so marginal cost plus now this is the same answer you will get through this as well same answer you will get through this as well same figure you will get through this as well but i am saving your time here i am asking you not to do this thing i am saving you just quickly work out like this getting the point so the same figure you can work out through this but don't waste your time because it's a easier method external selling price minus internal saving that's it okay clear everyone so you can even bring this answer back but we will save our time in the paper we know that if we work out like this or we work out like this we get the same answer so let's go for the easy ones do you want to follow easy things or difficult one easy right so that's the rule i've made for you people happy clear okay perfect now
perfect let's move on should i move on okay now so the minimum transfer price is just remember the rules now the minimum transfer price is no spare capacity external selling price less internal savings because general rule brings you back at the same point so don't use that general rule simply remember this for spare units it's marginal cost only just remember these rules now for general rule now for buyers from buyers perspective maximum now listen very quickly very quickly buyer can buy this for 13 from outside right yes 13 from outside right now listen if i'm the seller you're the buyer try to understand i said for these 150000 units these are spare units okay now for these 150000 units the maximum that buyer can pay me is how much 13 because this is the same buyer can buy from outside simple for spare units for spare units the maximum that the buyer will pay me is 13 so minimum for the seller is 7 and maximum for the buyer is 13 for spare units okay now units which are not spare are 30000 right so the maximum for buyer will be this is not written in any book as well i'm telling you the maximum for buyer will be lower of external purchase price and internal offer come on tell me what will be the maximum for the buyer now external purchase price is 13 right and internal offer is how much can you tell me the internal offer for these non spare what is the internal offer everyone it's 14 right 14 so compare buyer will select lower off and what's that lower off 13 wow i've made these rules and these rules will help you in every situation the only thing you have to keep in your mind work smartly and understand what is being asked if you'll understand what is being asked, apply my rules and you'll get the answer in every given situation. Okay? Now, once you have understood this game, now you are in a position to take decision of the units that will be transferred and the price from group perspective. So now from group perspective, you will be in a position to take a decision. So do you want me to? Can you take a final decision? Tell me. You tell me the final decision and I'll write here. For these 30,000, what buyer will do? Will buyer purchase from outside for 13 or will purchase for 14? Tell me. Tell me. So, for this 30,000, buyer will purchase from outside at 13. Is that beneficial for buyer? Yes. Okay. Listen. Okay. So if buyer buys from outside, will it, will this affect the seller? No. Will this affect the seller? No. Because seller was doing a compromise. So seller will sell outside. No loss for the seller, right? No loss for the seller. Seller will sell outside. 
no harm to the company. Seller will sell outside for 15. Remember, 15. Seller will sell for 15 and buyer will buy for 13. Understood? Okay. Seller will sell for 15 and buyer will buy for 13. Is this a decision right? Okay. Now, this means that for these 30,000 units, which seller was transferring to buyer internally, it's clear that this these 30,000 will not be transferred within the division because it's useless. It's useless to transfer these 30,000 within the division because it's good that seller sells outside for 15 as he was doing previously and buyer buys from outside. I'll answer all your questions once I'm done with this, okay? Hold on then. Okay. Now, what about these 150,000 spare units? Should they transfer these internally? Yes. Spare units, yes. So, these 150,000 units, they can transfer within the division. Okay? Within the division. So, what would be the minimum for this? 7 and what would be the maximum for this 13 minimum 7 maximum 13 now they will negotiate themselves and we don't know what be the price got it so what is the decision now we found decision for two things units and transfer price which means the units that would be transferred will be 150 spare units and the price would range between 7 and 15 that we don't know sorry 7 and 13 okay understood the decision final one understood the situation tell me yes or no done Clear? Say yes or no. Now, if this is clear, so listen. Let's go to the question and see what they're asking and how quickly will I find the answer now. Be with me. Where is the question? Okay. Listen. Assuming the new group purchasing policy Conclusion is very simple. Pooja, I'll repeat again. Assuming the new group policy is to ensure optimization of group profit. Now, this is an indication that use general rule. Okay. Calculate and discuss two verbs. The number of adopters which B should buy from A. Okay. And the number of adopters which A should sell to external customers. So you need to ask, you need to tell what? Number of adopters B should buy from A, which means internal transfer. Yes or no? Yes or no? Group profits are to be maximized. So what are you using? General rule. Yes or no? So if you use general rule, you have this in front of you. You have these things in front of you. So see, how quickly will I get the answer? How many units B will buy from A? We already found out that. How many? 150,000. 150,000. Is this good for the group? Yes. No loss. Which means the, the answer is 150,000 units. The answer is 150,000 units. 
B will buy from A. This is good for both. And how many A will sell outside now? Come on, give. can you give me the answer? How many A will sell outside now? 30,000, the one that he was transferring and the other 170 because in total it's 200,000, right? 30,000 these and the 170 previous one. Remember? 200,000. So in total, if I give you the answer, if total I tell you the answer, so the answer is 200,000. 30, where he will not compromise those 30 now, plus the 170, which means 200,000 total. Found out? Found out through this general rule? Yes or no? So through this, you took a decision. And the decision was what? How many units of internal transfer? So 150. And A will sell 200 outside. The question said you to discuss this. So what are the key things that you will write here? Simple. Quickly, I'll tell you. You will say that for division A, it's feasible to sell 200,000 at 15. That will maximize the profits. Complete 1, 200,000. And for division B, division B should buy 150,000 at, at, at a price, whatever it is, 17 or 13, whatever it is. That will be good for B. That's it. Understood? The question was asking you about units only, okay? About units only. Number of adopters. Answered? Done. Okay, second, last one. Last one. Calculate, discuss minimum transfer price. Would be for any additional, additional supplied above the current level to division B so that B can make, can meet its demand. Okay, what you need to find out? That minimum transfer price for additional units. Come on, tell me. So right now, 350,000. Right now it is transferring 150, right? And 200 outside, 150 internal. Can you give me the answer? What will be the minimum one? We have already worked out. 14, 14, 14. How? See. Spare are 150, right? Now, any additional above is how much? 30,000. Okay? So, when your spare is 150, now if you go above 150 to meet internal demand, so you are compromising on your external market of 200,000, yes or no? Yes? So, if you exceed your... so. This means external selling price of 15 minus internal saving of 1, and that's 14. The general rule. So spare that units that are not spare. Now, these 30 are not spare units, okay? So if these are not spare units, minimum is 14. So the answer of minimum is 14. Understood? How quickly through this you are able to find out 
through this how you are able to find out if you understand this game when question says profit maximization general rule and this is what you have to keep in your mind see whatever examiner is asking use this model in front of you and you will find out the answers i am sure you can do all the questions now i am sure listen i'll give you an analysis this is type 2 question and type 1 this is also type 2 question this is also type 2 question this is type 2 question this is type 2 question and this is type 3 so many times you see type 2 is tested along with type 1 so all these question you can solve using my million dollar technique this one this one i have made it very clear to all of you now you can try and you will solve all these questions hopefully the last thing the third type is if some other policy is given other than group profit maximization if they say some other policy like they need to work out on the basis of a uh, total cost cost plus profit or marginal cost that's the other policy that will be given to you if group profit maximize word is not used not used and some other policy is given for example work out transfer based on marginal cost plus 30% profit full cost plus 20% profit so just use that policy whatever it is given and work out the transfer price so look for some other if some other policy is given so follow that only and one question came for this third one and that's hammer company that way 20 11 years back so the recent attempts includes type 2 mainly type 2 mainly man this will change your mindset to be honest watch this video again ask your friends to watch this again and if you will watch this again and understand what i'm explaining you can solve any question on transfer price now that's my challenge internal offer means 14 14 14 if you sell units that you can sell outside to internal division so it's what i told you right it's it's general rule which is marginal cost plus opportunity cost which is equals to external selling price okay and minus the saving so that's the internal offer 14 this one okay third policy is very simple third category is what if some other policy is given for example work out transfer based on cost plus basis marginal cost plus basis of the seller so just read that and work out transfer price simple whatever is given but if question says group profit are to be maximized then just use general rule okay okay now guys i hope this is clear to all of you okay so, so the conclusion is simple conclusion in previous case was that internal transfer will be of 150000 units and the price could be between 7 and 13 that's the conclusion okay okay i'll show you the list of questions 
Aisha, wait, wait, wait. Aisha, wait, wait, wait. Aisha, wait. Okay. Okay. The discussion Isha Naveed in this question was the same I explained you already. That is, uh, A will sell complete 200,000 units at price of 15. That's good for A. Will not transfer internally. And B uh, will not buy more than 150,000 units because A is selling you those units for uh, 14, right? So this means B would want to buy only 150 at 13. That's it. This is the discussion for the first part. And the second part discussion is that the minimum transfer price for A will be 14 because uh, A is shifting these units from the external market. So the external selling price is 15 and the saving that A is getting is 1. So for A minimum is 14 because this is the one A can get from outside as well. That's the discussion. Yeah, Omar Sharif, you are right. Okay, three rule slide. Here you go. Yes, marginal cost plus opportunity cost is always external purchase price minus internal savings, minus internal savings, if there are any. Okay, Dure Nayab. This is clear. So my technique is a complete one. Don't worry. Watch the video again. If you struggle, ask me in the WhatsApp group, not an issue. Before I end, a quick feedback about today's session. How was the today's session? And uh, did you like the session, the technique, the way I've dealt with financial, non-financial and transfer pricing? Please, please give your feedbacks. How was the session? Please just rate the today's session. How different, easy it became now. Transfer pricing and financial non-financials. Video you will get from the Vimeo channel. Was it useful? Please, your feedbacks help me to improve every time. Was I successful in making this easier for you? Are you happy with the techniques? Okay, I will cover the new topics in the, on the last day. I think, thank you very much for your feedback. Please, if you're not part of my WhatsApp group, send me a message here at this number so that I can add you in the WhatsApp group. Do give your feedback after the session to ACCA Pakistan how you like the session and how things are getting easier for you. Please, ACCA is really concerned about your PM result. So do let them know, was I success, was, was Rizwan Mina successful in making things easier for you or not? Okay, please do share your feedback. Take care. Sorry for the late start. Bye.